The first major city in the history of the United States lies at the center of the densely populated eastern seaboard, on a peninsula where the Schuylkill flows into the larger Delaware River. As America's original capital, Philadelphia was the gathering point for the most ambitious and brilliant minds from across the young nation. Its members of Congress met here at Independence Hall, the birthplace of American democracy, where they declared independence from the British and later debated and drafted the Constitution that created our modern form of government. The question that they'll face in this room is, what exactly is it that we want? Everything that the United States has been and, and will be is going to grow from the events that happen over about a 10 or 11 year period in this room. The Founding Fathers easily walked through the grid of narrow streets, America's first city to be organized this way. They conducted business at the nation's first bank, learned at its first library, and received medical care at its first hospital. Institutions that were either started or strongly supported by one of the most famous men in American history, Benjamin Franklin. Franklin's successful newspapers gave him a highly influential voice throughout the colonies, and he used it to gather and share information to improve people's lives. How can I light a street better? How can I make the sanitation better? If there was a better way to do it, then Franklin was interested in finding that better way. He wants to create the notion of citizenship, and citizenship has responsibilities. That's what Franklin is up to. Born in Boston, a 17-year-old Franklin moved to Philadelphia, drawn by its reputation for intellectual and religious freedom and tolerance, a culture created by its founder, William Penn. Penn had himself been a victim of religious persecution in Europe and took the unusual step of purchasing the land on which the city stood from the local Lenape tribe, and even made a treaty of friendship with their chief, Tamanend. The intention of continuing peace was a high point in the time period of the European incursion. It stands out as a, a watershed moment. Even the name Philadelphia reflects this ethos, a combination of the Greek words for love and brother, giving it the nickname, the city of brotherly love. Today, the largest statue on any building in the world is a 36 foot tall, 53,000 pound bronze of Penn perched atop city hall. That mammoth building frames one end of the Benjamin Franklin Parkway, inspired by Paris's Champs-Élysées. The boulevard was designed to be lined with parks and the city's most important cultural institutions. But first, to create the space, a large swath needed to be cleared in one of the most heavily industrialized areas on the planet, as Philly was then known as the workshop of the world. On paper, that looks relatively easy. Diagonal boulevards were put into Paris in the 19th century. But you weren't talking about medieval buildings in Philadelphia. You were actually talking about row house neighborhoods. You're talking about factories, massive factories making machinery, making locomotives. The city acquired and efficiently demolished 1,300 buildings, with the proceeds benefiting the city's notoriously corrupt patronage network. Unfortunately, unlike Paris, Philadelphia lacked an emperor or visionary leader to drive the second phase of the project, the actual building part. The parkway was so slow in coming to fruition, but the project to move virtually every cultural institution in the city to the parkway fizzled out. The parkway did succeed in connecting Center City to the vast 2,000-acre Fairmount Park that is just beyond the Museum of Art and its famous steps. Multiple projects are now bringing the parkway closer to its original vision. A new African American museum is being built, the free library is being expanded, and the historic old family court building is being remodeled into a hotel. Across the old city on its riverfront, a portion of I-95 will soon be capped to create a park. The cap section is going to pick up the vibrancy of Old City and pull that across to the waterfront. One of the city's first major redevelopment projects occurred a century ago. What was a shantytown was transformed into the grounds for the 1926 World's Fair and John F. Kennedy Stadium. 
Today, the South Philadelphia Sports Complex hosts all four of this sports-crazed city's major professional franchises. And in 1980, it became the first and still only North American city to have all four teams reach their respective championships in the same year. But only the Phillies won it all. The city is also a winner in the arena of public art, with more installations and murals than anywhere else in the country. We are known as a public art city for having some of the most diverse, eclectic public artworks and visitors come now looking for our public art. This didn't happen by chance. In 1872, the nation's first private association to installing public art was formed here. So we say now, art for everyone, anytime, but that really was the, the message from the very beginning of this organization 150 years ago. Around the same time, Philadelphia became a hub for hospitals treating Union soldiers wounded in the Civil War. Doctors have continued to arrive, and today, one in six physicians in the U.S. receives training here. Fittingly, Philadelphia itself suffered two major injuries in 1800 that threatened its continued prosperity. It was replaced by Washington, D.C. as the national capital, and was surpassed by New York as the most populous U.S. city. So Philadelphians embraced an identity that can never be taken away, the city of firsts. Thanks for watching. Next, we drop in on Atlanta.